Good morning. Is that wrong and crazy? Or I'm sorry. Neil. Okay. Hello, guys. All right. <laughs> I know the title says, Ladies, You Set the Table. Actually, I wanted to uh, talk this morning. And I'm getting ready to go to the gym. But I wanted to get this in first. Um, as many of you know, I spend a great amount of time with trying. Hey, thank you for the hearts. I spent a great amount of time in trying to help women now when for many years um, I was not a very nice dude. And so one of the things that I try to do now in my atonement is try to help sisters, and I don't mean sisters just of color, I mean women, to help women really understand where a lot of us dudes are coming from when we're attempting to mislead and, and, and use you. But the one thing I can say I hear often uh, about why men cheat how do men cheat why did I cheat and all the things like that first of all many men are greedy I'm not gonna say all many are greedy and we tend to not look at what we have because we're focused on more on what we want and like many things in life there's never enough but okay, with that said, what I have found over the years is that many of you young ladies set the table for what I am going to be able to do to you. I can come to the table and want anything from you. The question is, are you going to allow me to have my way? And like any predatory animal, we are not going to... Most men who are out here cheating and most men who are doing whatever are not going to go out here and search for women that it's going to be super hard work to try to get with. Um, we might, depend on how you look, depend on what your bank account is. But not necessarily when there's so many women who will say yes to some remedial things. And you have to understand, I'm not talking about the average dude who's just real disrespectful. <laughs> just walks up and he wants what he wants and he's being foolish. I'm talking about the dude who takes time out to think about what he's doing. Who knows when he walks into the bar, club, restaurant, library, wherever. That is about who can I get with today? Who can I get with this week? Who can I get with this weekend? Good morning. Who can I mess with? Whose head can I mess with? Because many of us take pleasure in getting over on women. So we want assistance in that. We want the assistance from you. Oh, yeah, trust me, it's a lot of us. We want the assistance from you to help us. So when you don't ask questions about things that you clearly see are wrong, there you go, you're setting the table. Well, he can be social. The question is if being social is disrespectful to you. See, I'm a social butterfly, but if I feel that being a social butterfly is being disrespectful to my wife, then I'm going to take a step back and check myself because it's disrespectful to her. But she'll check me too. And she's going to make sure there's just certain things that she's not going to allow. And that's what I mean by setting the table. Most women figured it out, but you have to hold that bar high. You have to set that bar high where the average guy is just not going to get away with foolishness. And then... With the guy that you are serious about, you have to make sure he understands where that bar is set with you and things that you're not going to allow. Because we all are inner children. We have inner children. And just like children, you have to set boundaries. Or your children will run all over the place. And you see what it looks like when parents have no control of their child. Well, if you don't think grown men are the same way, we are. When you play the fly on the wall and just listen to a group of men talk, it can be some of the rudest conversations. Oh, no doubt. We, we definitely, and that's what I mean by setting the table. We definitely treat men how to treat, because once he knows he can get away with this, the question now becomes what? What else can I get away with? And then when he does mess up, and we are going to mess up, and we may get caught. Do you take us back without us actually having changed? Is the I'm sorry and waterworks enough 
for you to go, oh, and you take me back. Okay, what did I do differently? Other than got a little emotional, told you what you wanted to hear, and now you put me right back in the same position. If you screw up at work, you don't necessarily get the same job back. You might get fired. And if you are taken back, some of your duties are taken from you. You screw up at church, you may not get the same position back. Give them the rope to hang themselves with. I'm <laughs> well, that's the question is, why does it have to be rope? It could be a little piece of string. It don't have to be rope because by the time you get to the end of that rope, you may be so emotionally distraught, you may not care. It all depends. Each relationship is different, but what we really have to pay attention to is what are we setting? Ladies, what are we setting out for these guys? You know, I said the other day, I like to kind of keep things simple because we tend to make it more difficult as adults. You really do have to pay attention to where you meet some people. And you really have to pay attention to where they were in their lives at the time that you met them. And keep that snapshot. Just hold on to it. And then see what's going on in your relationship in connection to that snapshot. <laughs> you learned your lesson? I understand. Um, I think we all have. But this is one of the reasons why I try to give back. Because when I would go into an environment, I knew which type of environment to go into. Now, let me explain to you what that means. I am, the, I am a fan of full-figure women. To me, sexy starts at size 16. So, give me a size 16, a size 14 maybe. But a size 16, a better woman, I love. So I would frequent big girl, full figure events, big girl parties, things like that, because I knew there was going to be a plethora of the women that I was attracted to. I also knew that there was going to be a greater chance of women having lower self-esteem at these events, which helped me. Now, what I would do, and yes, I'm giving away the trade secrets here, and much of this I talked about in my book, From Jiggle to Jesus, because I wanted folks to understand what I was when I was that dude. A good manipulator. Yeah. How we? Oh, you say oh at my book, or you saying oh what I'm about to talk about? Anyway, um, a good manipulator will come into an environment. He will analyze the environment. He will see which dudes in this environment can help him. Meaning the thirsty guys. Yes. Oh, but low self esteem. I'm getting to that. Low self esteem is actually part of it. So as a manipulator, what you want to see is who is exuding evidence of low self-esteem on the outs that you can see from the onset. Never, never your book. I'm sorry, you lost. Never my book. Okay, you have to read. Gotcha. <laughs> never read the book. Oh, okay. Yeah, from Jiggle to Jesus is actually. Um, I wrote about my transformation from a misogynistic man to a man of God. And it wasn't an easy transformation. And I hurt a lot of people along the way. I did a lot of devastating things to folks along the way. And I have offered my forgiveness. I have prayed for my forgiveness. And one of the things that I do on a regular is now try to help women that are dealing with men like I used to be. So that is my way of attempting to give back, even though I may not ever be able to replace or change all the damage that I did but I can try to prevent others from going through it so as I was saying is the manipulator goes into the environment he looks for outwardly signs of low self-esteem women that just seem to be there because their friends drag the women who just seem to not be as un as comfortable as they should also he wants to look and see who are the women that are larger than life who may seem like they're putting on a show now you may say do men really do all this? Yes, we do. Yes, men will actually sit and go through all that. What do you think many men do when they're looking at your Facebook photos, when they're looking at your IG photos, even here on Periscope? They're looking for signs of weakness. Not all men, so let me just explain that. Not all men, but many. And they're looking for those chinks in the armor because they're looking to see if you've set the table to tipping your hand to something that will allow them to get in to your mental state and manipulate you to then allow them to have what they want. Maybe a place to stay. Maybe a side chick. Maybe there's some chick to bed down. 
And I've been paying I've been paying attention to a lot of scopes and I've been hearing a lot of women say basically I was letting men define me and I was allowing men to treat me like this and my ex-boyfriend, my husband was doing this and I and I'm saying there it is right there. A lot of these women set the table. Now, yes, some women are outright lied to. Some women women are with men who completely misrepresent themselves. And there's nothing that we can do except when a person shows you what they are, leave them alone. See, I don't have a problem if you were if you were bamboozled because people are going to lie. The question is, once they lied, did you make them change before you put them back on? Because if you put them back on and nothing changed, well, then you were just asking for the same thing to happen, but at a different time. So when you go into an environment with your girlfriend, trust what they might see if they're the party type. Now, I'm not saying go on their opinion about everything because that doesn't mean that they, they know it all. But trust that they might see some things that you don't. But also make sure that you have a clear understanding of who you are and what you will and will not allow. Now, here's the other thing. Do not allow your body to victimize you. And what I mean by that is I don't care how nice he holds you when you're dancing. I don't care how well he kisses. I don't care how he holds your hips and holds you close when y'all are talking and all of that feels good. And you start thinking it's been a little while since something has jumped off. Can't be that bad. Trust me, the manipulator understands that. He likes to get into a conversation with you about it. He wants to know when's the last time you've been with somebody. When's the last time you were in a serious relationship? When's the last time you were in a sexual relationship? Know which conversations you're going to have and not going to have with someone you don't know. Because until you really get to know a person, there's just some information about you just don't need to be, be given right now. And I'm going to be talking about this um, often over the next couple of days in just terms of dealing with manipulators and understanding what manipulation looks like. I talked about emotional blackmail yesterday, and that's another thing that we'll use, but we'll use that later on in the relationship. But I definitely want to talk about understanding and recognizing manipulators and how to, to defend yourself against it because it starts with you um, one of the greatest defenses that I've seen from women that I've dated that would keep me at bay when I wanted what I wanted was that they were hard and fast on what they were and were not going to accept they were hard and fast on where they would and would not go and they were hard and fast on conversations that they would and would not have. They did not allow me to manipulate the things that came from them. I could say whatever I wanted. They just weren't going to bite at the bait and allow me to have my way. Because most manipulators are spoiled children. They have something, some issue with themselves. Um, some void that's trying to be filled and doing you dirty. And they will never fill that. It'll never get filled no matter how many women they lay with, no matter how many women they lie to, it'll never get filled. And you'll just be part of the minutia of women that are tossed into this void. And when you really get to the heart of it, you'll see that he didn't mean much, if not any, of what he was saying. And it's tricky because sometimes the good dudes will say some of the same things that you hear from some of the bad guys. This is the key, time. A good dude will wait. A good dude will date you. A good dude will want to get to know you, but all of you. The things that you like, the places that you want to go. What are some of your aspirations? What are your dreams? And then he'll lay his on the table. Because he wants to see if yours lines up with his and if they're compatible. Because if not, he doesn't want to be there and waste his time. See, the manipulator will make everything sound beautiful. The manipulator make it sound like, like you're watching Notebook and you two were designed to be together. Trust me, we watch no book, not for the same reason you do. We watch all the movies that you do, not for the same reason. It's to give us something to discuss with you or to say, you know, like in Notebook, I, I want a relationship like that. And you go, really? And we sit there and go, yes, we do. <laughs> but in actuality, <laughs> we don't have any idea of what that actually looks like or even want anything remotely like that. But if it'll get you excited to allow us past the defenses, well, then we'll say it. I was a chameleon. I would become whatever the woman needed me to become to make her feel comfortable. 
to give me whatever I wanted. And then once I got bored or once I got to the point that I had no use for her, okay, now I would just either blow it up, put myself in a position where she would dislike me and get rid of me or get rid of myself. It was too easy. And as easy as I make that sound, that's how easy as it was. Now I understand it and I understand how wrong it was. And so I work very hard to try to help with um, changing that. And the hope is that I'm able to do that and help others. And the hope is that when people watch scopes like this or they read my books or whatever, they can take something from it. Or when they reach out to talk, that's another thing too. Feel free um, to reach out and speak. I'm going back to school in January to work on my um, second master's degree. But this one is going to be in ministry and counseling because I want to be able to help folks directly. I want to be able... Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate that. I want to be able to give back... And, and know it's coming from a great place. I believe it is now, but I want the actual education behind what I'm doing because I have some plans for some writing that I want to do that's connected to it. And so that's where I'm going back to work on that line of studying. But like anything, I hope that this scope, as well as any of my other scopes, have helped. If you need to reach out to me, if you want to ask any questions, if you want to talk, um, main office at bravenpublishing.com, B R A V I N. BravenPublishing.com is my email. That's main office at BravenPublishing.com. I am on all the social 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 media sites: uh, Facebook under KL Belvin, Google Plus under KL Belvin, Twitter KL Belvin. Also, Braven Books. That's my publishing company. I own my own publishing company, and our website is www.BravenPublishing.com. We actually work to give authors an opportunity to publish their works, as well as I publish my own works. Um, the titles of my book, my first poetry book, A Man in Transition. My second, my memoir is, as I said, From Gigolo to Jesus, which actually is my movement from being misogynistic to a man of God. And I am actually working currently on a, a, a fictional book called Lukewarm Saint, about a teacher who's torn between his love of women and the feelings that he's getting after he's actually with these women. And he's torn between what he wants and what's the right thing to do something i know a little bit about kevin <laughs> yes kevin watkins that's the character and i called him kevin because so many people call me kevin and get my name wrong so i made my character name kevin oh you remember that oh thank you yes kevin but um kevin watkins and he's torn he's got his mother and grandmother who keeps begging him to make some type of decision because he's a very successful educator but they're worried about him throwing it all away the way his father and grandfather has. And you'd have to read the book to see what the father and grandfather actually did. And it comes down to a situation that causes him to make a decision one way or the other. And you have to read what that situation is. And I tried to make sure that I wrote it as realistic as possible because I want people to actually see themselves and the choices that they have to make based on what they might want to what is the right thing to do. Um, we seem to... There seems to be a lot of that in the world now where folks know what's right, but do whatever anyway. But this is why we I do scopes like this. this is why the people do the scopes that they do with the hope to try to help others to make the right decisions. And so, as I said, my website is www.bravenpublishing.com. So you have ways to reach me. Please replay. Please share this with anyone and, and anybody needs to reach out if they'd like to talk or they just want to ask some questions because they're not sure some things in their relationship. Feel free. I'm here. I'm around. Um, I Like I said, I'll try to scope each day if I can. Tomorrow, I am going to look at low self-esteem and what we can do to help build self-esteem in full-figured women. And first of all, stop thinking that your size is a negative. Your size is beautiful. And there are men who love your size as is, but society would have you believing that your size is a negative because they don't represent you the right way. You need some relationship advice? Oh, sure, reach out. I definitely would um, love to help you. Um, look forward to hearing from you, any questions that you might have. Um, but definitely to my full-figure sisters, please do not allow society to shape the way that you think. I see that a lot of sisters are having surgery. A lot of sisters are doing a lot of things to augment their bodies. And you don't need it. If you're healthy and you went to your doctor, now if your doctor says you need to lose some weight because you have health issues, okay, well then there's ways to, to get help and support with that too. 
but don't just carve up your body and don't just do things to yourself because you believe it's what's necessary for you to look good. You look good as is. Like I said, there are some men out here that love full-figured women. I am one of them. I married a full-figured woman. And I know of other men who love sisters as they are, thick as they are. And let's stop trying to change our bodies to become what we believe society wants us to be. It's not, be. It's not worth it. But I would definitely will talk about that tomorrow. I'm just not sure when. But I'll jump on and we'll talk about low self-esteem. Because low self-esteem is the door opener. And once you get a guy like me into your life and your self-esteem is low, I was going to abuse you. And there's men out there now who's looking to do the same thing. And I'm going to help to try to defend you from that if possible. So, I want you to have a wonderful day. I appreciate it. Make sure if you're looking on the replay and you got to the end of this message that you have given some hearts throughout. Uh, my understanding is hearts actually help with the messages because people will tend to pay attention to you based on the hearts that you receive so feel free to bang away the hearts thank you butterfly i appreciate that um and i definitely appreciate you stopping by again look forward to seeing you again on future scopes and i am here if you have any questions that you'd like to ask i look forward to it so have a wonderful day this is kl belver take care god bless